back with Cedar and a couple things that we, we are improving on. I want to get her, I want to get her, now I just took her out of the kennel. So she's got a lot of energy. She was just hopping around, got her into the grass. She went to the bathroom. There's a couple of things she's doing really nicely is starting to respond to that pressure. The slip chain is helping um, because I'm actually putting less pressure on her. I, I use the adjustable leader, which is the, the collar that we designed to go with this. And it's just, I, I think it works. It just doesn't give her the audible part. So you're gonna hear the chain. If I give her a good crisp correction, she hears it coming. And I think she's responding to it much better. I've had a lot of questions about the collars that I'm using, slip chain or adjustable leader or a flat nylon collar. So I think it's real important for people to understand that's a bad habit that we're gonna work on. Come here, come here. So here's the situation. I don't want her coming off a lead and just thinking freedom, I can go anywhere I want. Sit down. Sit, 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 good. But you're not gonna see me panic about it. Now, very good. We're gonna see how long this will last. I heal her on the left-hand side. Anytime I heal the dog on the left-hand side, you gotta make the letter P and go over their head. And the reason is, is the tail of this has to be on my side. So I'm over here, the dog's over here. When I go to put correct pressure on the dog, I correct and then I release, it turns off. If I turn that around and I put it on backwards, it might be loose to start, but I correct and then I go to release and it never releases. This tightens and locks in, so I'm feeling that pressure. So there's a real important way of using this properly. The value in it is on, then off, on, then off, on, then off. So for her, now this is beautiful. She sat nicely for me. And typically I would say that wasn't gonna happen. When I first got her, she was a she was a wild jackrabbit. She was all over the place, like she just did. But what we didn't do is we didn't panic. We called her back to us. What I didn't like about that, and this is something we need to work on, and I probably should work on it in a different place. This is too much freedom. But I like to have, so she's real handsy. You bring your hands down by her, she really likes to want to nip and bite and chew at you and play with you. She's become very handsy with my, with my dad. My dad's got scratches from her because she's biting at him. So I do a couple things. A, I don't put my hands down there very often because if I do, I'm asking for trouble. So avoid the habit, avoid the opportunity for her to form the habit. Occasionally I would like to touch her. I'd really like to praise her sometimes, but I can't get her too excited. So when the time is right and I come in, good. That's all she needs. She doesn't need any more than that. Good. And I sometimes come in here and I adjust this collar because this collar has got to be, the ring's got to be touching for there to be no pressure. You can see she gets real antsy and mouthy. So stop, stop that and take it away. Now she's going to go, oh, I've, I've exceeded my limit here of focus. Sit, sit. Good. It's just a reset for her. We need to start expanding that. She's so short. It used to be 10 seconds, tops. She's getting better at it in three days. But you see how the rings are touching each other right now? That's zero pressure. This is pressure. So if you're always walking around like this, she feels pressure. So she feels like in order to get a change, I always say you gotta hit 10, increments of 10. If you start at three, that means you gotta go to 13. If you start at six, that means you gotta go to 16, which means you gotta put a lot more pressure on than you probably need to in order to get the change. But if you go from six to 10, 10 doesn't get a change because it's only a, a change of four. Gotta change 10. And so starting at zero allows me to go, that might be enough, that might have been a 10. She's responding really well right now. As we go through this, I've had to give her a couple serious corrections. There have been a couple times where she just went against me and flopped around and got all, kind of, all kinds of crazy, like a little bucking bronco. And so at that moment, I didn't lose my cool, but I certainly didn't allow it to happen. And so I gave her a very firm correction, firm enough to get her feet up off the ground. And she sat down and she looked at me and she went, geez, man, I'm really sorry. And I've had to do it less and less and less since we got to, since we hit that point.
But I think what happens happened a lot prior to this was my dad was afraid to give her enough pressure to change her behavior because he didn't want to be mean to the little puppy. And I don't want to be mean to the little puppy either, but I also don't want the puppy to be biting me and scratching my arms and not be able to take it for a walk and not be able to call it back. At some point we have to change behavior. This has gone way too long and boy, she's done well with it. So I'm going to change her heel. I'm going to let her move, sit, and then restart. And she's real willing to restart for me. She's real willing to take direction. She's real willing to give me eyes. Good. When she's looking at me like that, it's one of two things. What do you want me to do next? Or sometimes, when I first got her, good. When I first got, ah, 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 sit. Sit, good. Just pushed it too far. Sometimes, when I first got her, she'd look at me, and then she'd get down like a little puppy, and she'd and bark at me, and she'd want to challenge me, and I just didn't deal with it. So I wouldn't allow, I wouldn't entertain the game. She wanted to run and play and have me chase her, and I stood there. Sometimes I turned and left her, walked away the other way. Now the other dogs just came out, the girls are coming out. This is very distracting, so I'm gonna help her heal, heal. I'm gonna help her by healing her away from it. Now, don't train a puppy like this in a group. They have a hard enough time focusing on their own much less with other people. Now, I have started already working her around my other dogs in a real short period of time, and she sucks. She's terrible. She's really distracted. And so what we do is a lot of just very slow walking, doing nothing. Now the girls are gonna come by. Are you guys coming through? I'm gonna let you guys walk past. Just don't pay any attention to Cedar, okay? And we're gonna let her experience this where there's a lot of distraction. Sit, 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 good. Those are some pretty powerful corrections. And I didn't do it hard enough to get the change. And, the, and those were harder than I would have done, harder than I ever would have had to do it by herself. But because of all these distractions, hi, bye, sit, good. Boy, that's tough for her to get through. Good, heal, heal. So here's the thing, the behavior there was worse than it was and that I'm going to show you here coming up. As they move away and get out, her behavior will get better, probably. Good. There was a 10. Did you see that correction? That was a 10. That was enough to get her attention. And the reason it worked is because it's the chain and it was audible. There was another 10. Got her correction. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I could see that was going to be a way more tempting thing than this turn. And she wouldn't have responded. When she wanted to go down and pick that up, she wouldn't have responded to this. That wouldn't have done it. So I'm gauging her level of correction to keep her nose up and her eyes on me as best I can. And she's real, but look at now, the girls are off 100 yards and watch how much, look at how much better this heel work is. Well, we've eliminated some of the challenges. And she's become better. But what I'm more happy with was, sit there, so compliant when she's got a chance to focus. What I'm happy with was when the girls walked by, she did, she behaved terribly in relative terms in comparison to what she's doing right, was doing and is doing right now. But the distraction was so much greater, I actually thought that was better. I was more happy with her getting through that and I told her that, I told her, good. It was really a nice job, heal. Good. You don't hear me get as excited about stuff that I think she should be able to do. But when she does something that I think she deserves a little more praise for, I'm gonna give it to her. I'm just moving down to move that collar. I can't let that collar slip down or it's ineffective. And here's a little bit, these are little challenges of hers. She kind of bucks into me a little bit. She'd like to reach up. She'd love for me to reach down and pet her or do something for her right now, more than what she's getting. Sit, sit. Two times I gave her a chance, didn't work. Feathered it, gave her a correction. My correction wasn't very good. Heel. 
the lead got a little snagged up. But after that correction, look at her eyes. Good. Sit. Good. Now I'm working into just a very, very short remote sit. Ah, 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 ah. Sit. 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 Good. Just a really short remote sit. I'm not letting the lead go. She's, I couldn't. If I did, she'd be off. But what's different is, is she's gotten pretty good at heel, in heel position. She's gotten pretty good. Sit. As soon as I take a step to her, that, there's that. Sit. It's too much pressure for her and she can't sit still and she's got to squirm. When I'm standing right next to her, I think she's starting to feel comfortable. Heel. As long as I don't let it go too long. Sit. Good. But that was 100% a little challenge from her. And it was because I'm over here and I'm moving back towards her and she goes, I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can engage him. I wonder if I can get a little game going. I wonder if I can be the boss here. And I don't let it bother me. I'm still not quite ready to go behind her, but here we go. Nope, sit, sit, sit. Good, good. Good, not quite ready to go behind her all the way. Good, but this is new to her. I haven't done these little remote sits with her. Not much of it, good. Then I sit, sit. Then I slide in and me sliding in is too much for her. It's too much excitement. It's too much pressure and she gets excited. So I need to slide in real calm. Good. Good. Heel. Good is enough. I don't need to pet this dog. It bubbles her over. Sit. Sit. Good. Good. Now, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna feather this off. Good. I don't wanna turn this into a wrestling match. No, 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 no. Good. No. 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 Good. All I'm doing is getting my hands on her collar. Nope. Sit. Sit. Good. Nope. Nope. Good. Good. There's a nope. Good, that's enough. Now, because what I want to do, and it's always back to that testing, it used to be that would have been where she'd bite my hand. Enough. That would have been, she came up and she kind of snapped at my hand. That used to be where she would get my dad. That's where she would try to get me when we first started. Sit. Good. See how quickly she sat? I almost out of frustration, because she knew she was beat. She kind of threw her butt down and she kind of threw her head up and she kind of went, <sighs> fine. Because we just had a moment. My moment was I want to come down and I want to touch your collar, sit down. I want to come down and I want to touch the collar because I want to start taking the collar on and off without her panicking and freaking out and having this freedom to run. And I'm not going to freak out when it happens. So now I come in and I actually get a little petting out of it. Here, here. Now, that's pretty nice control. Let's take her, sit. Now I am gonna show you how we get her off. I'm gonna let her off, out of control. Good, sit, come here, sit, S sit, S sit, good, good. She really wants to engage me into something exciting. I don't know that she truly understands it. She could run if she wanted to. But because we've done this now for three days where 
we're under control 99% of the time. Now yesterday I took her off lead and I don't want to not take her off lead. Because right now I do feel like I have some control and I don't want it to get to the point where I can't have any control over and have her get used to the idea of it. There's a very good dog. That's wonderful. All right, let's go. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to let her get to the idea of, you know what, I can do my own thing a little bit. Come on. Come on. Come on. But I got to be able to get her back. So we go that way, she goes that way. Then she turns around and she goes, uh oh, he's going that way. Good girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Sit. Sit. Come here. Come here. Come on. Right here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here. Sit. Sit. Good. Good. We're going to put it back on. Good. Good. And then I'm going to take it back off. Now she knows she's off. Here, 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 here. I want to get to the point where I can take this off without her bolting away. Sit. 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 Sit down. Sit down. Good. Good. And you got to get pretty coordinated with this. So you can't miss 10 times. You can't, you can't turn it into trying to throw darts at her with that lead. Here, right here. Get a hold of the end of it, and I'm going to get control back. Because we're kind of spinning up. We're kind of losing focus. We're kind of treading on the idea of losing any value. Sit. Good. There's another frustrated sit. I can see it in her body language. She sits out of a bit of reluctance, but I think she realizes, huh, fine, he's the boss. Good. And I gotta let her know that that was really a good decision. Good. Good. Heal. Part of it is just getting her to trust me. Sit. Sit. And the other part of it is knowing that all these little tantrums are gonna come up. I just can't lose my cool. I gotta be, I gotta be the, the one out of the two of us. I gotta be the one that kind of stays mellow. You get me upset and angry and blood pressure going and I start hollering and I start wanting to chase and I start doing, making decisions that are just stupid, but they're out of, out of me not really seeing clearly. I become red guy in that movie, whatever that movie is, that cartoon. Heal. Sit. Good. And I'm just, I'm just constantly looking at that little internal clock with her to see how long she can sit still. She sits still a lot longer today than she did two days ago. She's able to remain patient for three times what she used to. I mean, think about it, triple the amount of time. Now it was only five seconds before, but still, if we continue to have these kind of incremental growth as far as that focus amount of focus, we'll be doing minutes pretty soon. And then we'll be doing 10 minutes and 30 minutes. And But we gotta get five seconds first. Good, heal. So that's it, that's all I'm gonna do with her right now. Now, one of the things that we're doing with her, someone sent me a message and said, I'd be curious, I wanna know what you're doing the rest of the day. Watch my Instagram story, you'll see what we're doing. She lays on, bed, on the bed, place, or she's in the kennel. That's about it. Now I take her out probably three or four times throughout the day to go to the bathroom. She's getting a drink during the day. So, um, you know, she ate in the morning. She's going to go out an hour later and do her business. She comes back in, she lays on place. I work on the computer she, or she goes in her kennel, either or. A lot of time on place with her lately. Uh, and she does really well with it. Now I don't leave the room for 45 minutes or an hour, but I can leave, I feel confident leaving the room for a few minutes and then coming back and she's been staying on there. So that's good. Um, we, we would, we had to build up to that. And my parents have done some place training with her and they've done a pretty nice job with it. Um, I take her out to the bathroom. I either take her out on lead or I would say 50% of the time I take her out on lead. 50% I take her out free, let her do her business, because she'll stick with me. You just saw that, she's sticking with me. 
If I go the other way, she's coming with. If I go, if she goes the other, if she wants to go off, I call her and I go the other way and she comes back. And I've never not welcomed her back in. Every time she comes running back, I get down and I praise her and tell her how good she is. And if I have to get her somewhere at that point, then I just slip the lead on and off we go. We just heal. Good. That was a real nice little session right there of sit. Good. I didn't even think about it, but boy, that went long. So that's what I do with her. That's it. I don't think it's, it's not complicated. I'm not putting a ton on her. I'm letting her get in a routine at our house. I'm letting her get into a routine of expectations. What do I expect out of her behavior? And that's it. There's nothing more, nothing more complicated. It's very simple. It's very boring. It's very routine. It's very repetitious. And what that is going to do is it's going to create a habit with her. It, I do the exact same thing with my other dogs until they create this habit that this becomes normal and that's what we do. You walk into my house right now, well not right now because they're gone, but you walk into the house any time of the day there's bigger dogs that I trust laying on their beds, there's younger dogs in their kennels if I'm not there. When I'm there, they're on their place or in their kennel. That's it. That's a real nice session again with her.